Ooh. Welcome to the Gym Japan podcast. Yokosho Mita-san. And today, well, it's been an interesting day because now I'm in Tokyo. I've moved from Hikone-shi in Shiga Prefecture, so I'm in Japan, to Tokyo. And today was my first commute at work. Weird. Like, I've been working my job for six months now, and it's the first time I commuted to the office. It's a bit interesting thoughts about that, but today, let's talk a little bit of my move to Tokyo. And what I'm actually not really living in Tokyo. And I'll talk about that in today's episode of Jin Japan. So enjoy. So today I just said it's my first day at work for commuting. So yesterday I actually moved from Hikone to Tokyo. And it was quite interesting. Because I'm not really moving like you'd normally move. I'm now becoming a nomad. Ooh. He's a nomad. But being a bit more traveling around Japan, so I can move freely, travel, and still work at the same time. It's kind of what I wanted to do in the first place when I moved to Japan, but then COVID happens, and now I'm just gonna live with it. Take the risk, but hopefully, live in what I want to do in this country. And that's why I'm here. So, how did I move? From, well, Hikoneshi, Tokyo. Well, first off, I had to set my stuff. Like, <laughs> I had off. Basically, in Hikoneshi, I set up like a, an office, a workstation, computers, desk, and I've sent all that to Tokyo, to my main office, to my company's office, and they allow me to store the stuff there. So that was the main first thing. And I did a blog post about what company you should do, you should use. If you are want, want to move around Japan, not if you move to Japan, but if you want to move in, here in Japan, you want to move stuff like Yamato Unyu, please use them. More in the blog post, I previously posted, I'll put the link down below. If you're interested, please check it out. So, now my stuff is sent. I had to go to Tokyo, but it's expensive. Right? The fastest way of transportation in Japan is Shinkansen. I could get a Shinkansen. Mm. But that will cost like a hundred dollars, like Jumanen, it's a kind it's expensive. So what's the cheapest way to get to Tokyo? That is by bus, the night bus. Oh, <gasps> oh the night buses in Japan, they're pretty good, to be honest. But it's a bus, and they're at night. <laughs> so I took a train from Pekone City to Nagoya. And Nagoya actually has night buses. You can actually just have night buses, sadly. It's quite small. And then you can actually. You can go only. But, so I took the, bus, the train to Nagoya. The only trouble with the train, the bus is, well, it comes extremely late. Like, at 10.30. <laughs> I'd previously been traveling around the Mini Prefecture. So when I was coming my back from Mini Prefecture, I stopped off in Nagoya for one night, and I parked up my bike there. I found a free parking space, you can park your bike in quite next close to the Norway station, the link will be down below, as to where that is. But so I parked my bike there, then went back to Hikone Shi, then came back a few days later to move to Tokyo, finally. So I picked up my bike, and now I'm the station. You think you got a station? You got a bike and a bus? They, they can't go together. Well, with this bus company, they can. Not all bus companies in Japan can do this. But Blue Liner, Blue Liner, allow as an extra option for you to pay, I think, hmm, single yen, like 100, 1,500 1, yen, what's well, about 15 pounds, and I guess now probably 10 pounds actually now in the UK, be exchange, 10 pounds or 15 dollars to put your bike in, but the bike has to be in a bag. That is one condition. So this was the annoying part. So the bus stop, Funsunomaya. A Funsu in Japan, that is a water, not a water fountain, a water fountain. And at the Goya station, there's a water fountain. It's not really a water fountain, it's like a big bit of metal, it sticks a metal flower, and they're like, it's a water fountain. I'm like, okay. But find that there's a bus stop. So you wait there. And people set up, for like, the buses, because they've all got the COVID protections, so like, got to do big checks, temperature and stuff like that. Okay. And then they're like, well... The bus is all the way in front of the station, 500 meters away, 
everyone, Minasan, just walk over there. And I'm just like, ah, I've got a bike to carry. Because <laughs> I packed up the bike. So, even in the evening, you're like a bit tired, you've been up all day. And I'm like, oh, carrying this bike for 100 meters. I'm like, oh, messed up as well. I'm like, Ugh. finally get there. I'm like, you hit me in. <laughs> no, I got in fine, but <laughs> was a little worried, right? You're lifting a bike and they leave without you. <laughs> they take too long. But, I take the night bus to Tokyo. Well, I had some sleep. Well, I got some sleep. It's a my bus, but I know just try and meditate while I'm doing these buses. You're not going to get great, great sleep, so you might just do some meditation practice. And we rave Tokyo at 5 o'clock in the morning. What is to do when you're at 5 o'clock in the morning? Nothing. <laughs> There's nothing to do with Tokyo at 5 o'clock in the morning. Simply you're drunk and you want to like, mm, want to laugh at drunk people. There's not much to do. Except you want to work out and run around. For me, it was well, I've got to get my bike back together. So I put my bike back together and then chill in McDonald's. Because, well, the universal place where you can stay all day with internet and coffee. McDonald's. Like it's, it's always going to be open somewhere. It's one of the great things about McDonald's. If you're traveling, you're up early, you get the bus, just stay at McDonald's for a bit. Like, it's fine. <laughs> you don't feel bad if you don't buy anything from McDonald's. They're making them on. They're massive. No, but it's a bottle of coffee in them, so in there. So, after that, I've got time. It's time to travel around Tokyo. And I'm still early morning. It was about 7 o'clock. No, about 8 o'clock I hit out. And the cycling around Tokyo is nice. Like, in the morning, like, it's kind of nice. The sun's out, so the building, no one's really around. There's no one that's cars. You just massive streets, and you can cycle around pretty much freely. That's pretty good, especially if you're in a big city and you've spent the cycle before. It can be a bit hellish, like, cars are assholes, and people stop in the middle of the road, and it's like, ah, uh, you stopped in the cycle lane. Oh, my dog's Can you not? <laughs> and it can be annoying. Yeah, it's very annoying, right? But, I went around. I spent the day cycling around Tokyo, sitting in some little cafes and some bookshops. I'm just doing a little bit of work while I'm moving on. I don't want to do the whole thing. I ended up in Kanagawa. So, I'm in Kanagawa now. What's well, the prefecture next to Tokyo? And a little bit next to the closest part to Tokyo. Because my office is actually quite close by, my company. So, where am I at? That is an interesting thing. So I haven't moved to Tokyo. I'm in a dress. A dress sumihodai. A dress where you can sleep, where you can live. I don't know, sumihodai. It's a very interesting company. I want to talk about a little bit that more. Now, ooh. Mm. But first, let's finish this drink. Of hot chocolate. So, I'm going to talk a little bit about address now. So, address is the company I'm using to live in now. So, I didn't move to Tokyo, I didn't move to an apartment, I moved to a like a hotel service company. Not really a hotel service company. There are a company with many hotels and share houses around Japan. And with the price, a very, very cheap price of 40,000? 40, 40,500 yen. No, 40. Four, no, 15,000 yen. When you think about it, right? This is kind of the same price of rent from like a normal cheap apartment in Japan. Like if you went to Leo Palace, you'd probably get something similar, but you're living on your own. It's a bit sad. This tour of service, you can live in Japan, move around, but you can live into one of these apartments a max of a week. So a week, oh, it's like a hotel. You book hotels, you can move around. So you'll book a lot for each day, you just, so you can move around Japan. You move around Japan meeting people, traveling to places, and there's Wi-Fi, internet, in all the good internet, in all the apartments, bedding's all good, it's perfect, really, if you really think about it, you want to move to Japan, you don't want to spend too much expensive, and you want to experience Japan, this is the company for you, so say again, address, address, with ADD in capitals, it's worth looking into if you are in Japan, I want to move around and be a bit of a nomad. If you come to Japan to travel, well, I'm afraid you can't use this service. There's one restriction for foreigners, that is, you have to be a resident. 
You don't rush to Japan, you can't use this service. Exactly. But, if you are a resident, you can! And one other cool thing about this is you can bring some with you for free. What? 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 Did you just hear that? Yes. You can bring one of your friends with you if they're a resident in Japan for free. You can register a friend with you on this service and you can both stay in together. So say if you're a couple and you want to move around Japan, you can only, you're only paying the rent for one person. It's crazy, right? There is other, there's actually there's one more problem we want to talk about. That is, you can't actually live in this the whole time. There is a little problem with registry in Japan. You can't register a dress. You have to have a permanent dress, especially if you're a foreigner. What's well, a little bit sucky. Like, because you can't basically move around nowhere legally and not have a dress, right? You have to be registered, they're going to know where you are, bank stuff. Most Japanese people are fine, they use their family dress. But for people like me, it's a little bit harder, right? Because I'm not have a house in Japan, I don't have family here. I have friends, but, well, say when your friends, can I fakely live in your apartment? I actually looks bad on them, because they got landlords that they look at that stuff and they're like, well, the two people living here by law pay more rent. Nah, screw friend over. But luckily, the address company, they have an additional service. So you can choose certain apartments to, say, have a permanent address at. So you pay a little bit more, but you can stay in that apartment as long as you want. So this is what I am looking around now. So I'm moving around Japan and checking some of these other apartments I think I'm gonna stay in. I've still got my sort of address for in Hikone City right now. I don't need to move out to that just a month. So I've got some time to travel around to some of these other dresses that I wanna see if I'm living. And there's some in Chiba Prefecture in Chiba, Japan. Once the prefecture below Tokyo, by the sea has got the little Peninsula to get out that one. I'm gonna go around and look in there. Hopefully, I'll find a nice one to stay in by the seaside, and it should be good from here on out. So, Minasan, if you have any questions about this address company and my nomad life and how it's gonna work, please hit me a question in the comments or anywhere you can find this podcast at Jin Japan. So, it should be a good few months from now. We'll see what happens. I'll probably meet some new people. Maybe do some interviews. But there'll be more interesting content. And hopefully regularly now. Because I'm doing stuff. It'll be more interesting. <laughs> I'm not just staying at home and walking. So. I'm going to send the psychomatic kids to the there. Adios. Adios. Adios.